so in this video we're going to be looking at um, determining the rule for the graph of a polynomial. So reversing what we've looked at in the last two videos as we've been sketching the graph. So in the last two videos, here's the equation, sketch the graph. In this video, here's the graph or information about the graph, find the equation. Um, I'm only going to do two um, examples here. If you need more revision of this, um, I'll link in the description box a um, more extensive video on this um, from my year 10 course last year um, and there'll also be um, some videos on this from my year 11s um, that will come up um, in a couple of months time. Okay uh, so let's have a look at these two examples. So example one, find the rule for the cubic function pictured. Okay so the first thing I'm seeing is that it is an odd degree polynomial. That's because it starts in one direction, it finishes in a different direction. If it was even it would start up and finish up. Um, so it's an odd degree polynomial um, and it uh, goes down so it's going to have a negative leading term. Um, in fact it specifies that it's a cubic, sorry. I was going to say we actually need to know what degree it is and it does tell us. So it's a cubic so it, but it's a negative cubic. So we want to think about that. It's got two x-intercepts, they're going to be the most useful information for us. Okay, so I'm going to start with trying to construct the factorised form from those x-intercepts. So if there's an x-intercept at x equals negative 10, that's because there's a bracket that's x plus 10. And the graph is cutting right through there, so that's just a power of 1 on that bracket. If there's an x-intercept at negative 5, that's because there's a bracket that is x plus 5. And we're seeing a turning point there. And so, okay, it could be, it's, you know, possibly hard to tell whether it's a quartic kind of turning point or a quadratic kind of turning point, but the fact that we know it's a cubic can't have more than degree 3, so it has to be a squared here. That expanded out would give us x cubed. Now, we don't know about the dilation because there's infinitely many graphs that cut through the graph x-axis there and turn there. Okay, there's much, much steeper ones. We want to know the one that's going to have its y-intercept at negative 500. So we're going to use that point, 0, negative 500, to find a. So when x equals um, 0, y equals negative 500. Negative 500 equals, sorry, equals a, x is 0, so that's times 10, and that's times 5 squared. So negative 500 is a times 10 times 25. Uh, so that's 250a, and so a is negative 500 on 250, which is negative 2. So we expected a to be negative. We thought about that from the beginning, but I don't, I don't, I just call it a, and then I know that when I calculate it, it should give me a negative value. So my equation is y equals negative 2 times x plus 10 times x plus 5 squared. Okay, example two, find the equation of the cubic function for which the graph passes through the points with coordinates and we've just got four random points. None of them are x-intercepts, none of them are y-intercepts, we don't know if they're turning points, we've just got four points on a cubic. So we did this in a previous video looking at quadratic functions, it's a good chance to recap this um, process and skill again. You'd have your CAS for a question like this, especially with the size of those numbers, and especially given that it would produce four simultaneous equations in four unknowns. We, you wouldn't be expected to do that by hand. Okay, so we're going to let we're going to come up with a general form of a cubic, and it's going to need to have four unknowns in it to use our four points. Um, and so the most general form of a cubic does ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, and then we're going to form four simultaneous equations, which is why I've introduced the function notation, because it's neater to use function notation to create them. So f of negative 5 equals negative 112 will be the first equation. f of negative 2 equals negative 13 will be the second equation. f of 3 equals 192 will be the third equation. And f of 8 equals 6947 will be the fourth equation going to get my CAS to solve them simultaneously. So before I can do that, sorry, I need to define the general form of the function. Um, f of x is equal to a times x cubed plus b times x squared. Don't forget to be explicit about the multiplication. Plus c times x plus d. Okay, and then we're going to solve a system of equations. It's going to be four equations and the unknowns will be a, b, c, and d. The first equation, 
f of negative 5 equals negative 1, 1, 2. The second equation, f of negative 2 equals negative 13. The third equation, f of 3 equals 1, 9, 2. And the fourth equation, f of 8 equals 6, 9, 4, 7. And from that, we get that a equals 10, b equals 41, c equals negative 70, and d equals negative 237. Again, be clear about making sure you answer the question that's being asked. If the question might have said, a cubic of the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d goes through these four points, find the values of a, b, c, and d, in which case we would have finished our question here. But the question asks us to find the equation and so therefore the equation is y equals 10x cubed plus 41x squared minus 70x minus 237. Okay, work today is from exercise 4G. Please note that in question 6, 6B, there's a graph that's a bit ambiguous in that. Um, it, has a, it has a point of inflection, but it's not a stationary point of inflection. So in question 6B, the form of the equation is not this. Okay. Instead, you actually need to do similar to what we've just done in um, example two. Just deal with a general cubic um, and subbing in the, the points that you've got. Okay, uh, I'll leave you going to that on with that. As I said, if you need some more examples along this line, I'll link um, a video that I um, recorded with my year 10s last year with some more examples for you.